When Bamboo Lamp released the X-Wing Carbon last year, it took the desktop 3D printing space by storm. From its speed and print quality in an enclosed Core XY package, to the AMS material system add-on, it has been a massive leap forward punching well above many printers four to six times its price. Since then, they released the P1P, a stripped down version of the X1 Carbon, along with the most recent P1S, which is basically the child of the X1 Carbon and P1P. Although this gives some variation, the P1P starts at $600 and the P1S AMS combo is $700, which is above what most would consider a budget 3D printer. Last month, Bamboo reached out letting me know they were releasing a new printer completely different than their existing lineup with an emphasis on expanding accessibility. This is the A1 Mini, a cantilever style 3D printer that launched alongside a new AMS system called the AMS Lite. Starting at $300 for the printer or $460 for the combo, this really lowers the barrier of entry. Bamboo Lamp sent over the A1 Mini for testing a few weeks ago and I've been busy putting it through its paces since. In today's video, we will be diving into the A1 Mini along with the AMS Lite. We'll go over the machine specs, what setup was like, how it has performed, and I will give you my overall thoughts based on my time with it so far. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Thank you to Voxel PLA for sponsoring today's video. Voxel PLA aims to make 3D printing more accessible with a reliable and affordable filament. This filament is used exclusively in a 150 machine print farm and is now available for purchase. Their PLA Plus has recently expanded and is now available in 12 great colors. My personal favorites are Firetruck Red and Lavender Purple. Voxel PLA performance is excellent even on high-speed printers. Their filament is $16.99 per kilogram and at 3 spools, shipping is free within the US. Bulk discounts are also available, perfect for large projects, businesses, and schools. Voxel PLA has also expanded it to offer printer upgrades like the Vision Enclosure for the Bamboo Lab P1P with more coming soon. Links will be in the description to voxelpla.com so you can find out more about their high quality affordable filaments and printer upgrades. Starting with the specs, the A1 Mini is a cantilever style 3D printer with a build volume of 180 millimeters in X, Y, and Z. For motion, Z uses a beefy 15 millimeter linear rail, X a 12 millimeter linear rail, and for Y, the bed rides back and forth on linear guides. The main structural pieces of the frame are made of aluminum with lots of injection molding used to cover the base and other electronics. The print surface is a magnetic powder coated PEI flex plate system. The bed itself is quite thin at around two millimeters, but it is rigid mounted to a steel bracket on the underside, which helps to reinforce it. There's also three millimeters of insulation on the bottom to help with heating up and keeping the heat from escaping. On the back of the bed, there is a nozzle wiper that is used to clean the nozzle before bed leveling and a metal section for cooling the nozzle similar to what's found on other Bamboo Lab printers. Moving on to the tool head, the A1 Mini is using a direct drive extruder and all metal hot end, but it's very different to the one on their other printers. Starting from the top, we have our wires coming into a tool head board and what looks like a NEMA 11 for the extruder, equipped with a fairly similar gear assembly to the other bamboo printers. The hot end resembles the existing bamboo lamp hot end, but it's been completely redesigned. The heatsink is smaller and comes with a magnet installed that holds the hot end in place when attaching or removing. The hot zone or the heat block has also been expanded from 17 to 24 millimeters. In addition, this new hot end does not have a thermistor or any kind of heating element attached to it. This is a separate assembly inside of the tool head that makes up the other portion of the hot zone. This makes hot end swapping super simple since you're not unplugging or connecting any wires. The entire hot end is held in place using a clasp system. You place the hot end into position, which stays with the heatsink magnet, then swing the clasp around the body and clip the lock into place. The longest part of swapping out the hot end for me was just figuring out how to pull the silicone sock off. I have no idea how Bamboo Lab was able to make this work or work as well as it does. I would have figured the heat would have trouble transferring, but I believe the added length and the thinner profile of the new hot end is what makes up for this. Needless to say, it has performed very well for me and removing small wires and connectors from the equation should remove the potential for accidental damage. I'll be curious to see what the process actually looks like to swap out that separate heater and thermistor assembly, and hopefully that's something that will be in the new wiki. Additionally, there is a filament cutter on the right side, small heatsink fan on the left, and a 5015 laying on its side for layer cooling. I was told there are three Hall Effect sensors in the tool head for filament runout, detecting cutter issues, and another for extruder slipping, but the functionality for the extruder slipping has not been enabled yet. 
While the previous bamboo printers used load cells in the bed for leveling, the A1 Mini uses a load cell in the tool head instead. The last thing we need to touch on is the eddy current sensor found underneath the tool head. The only one I've ever seen prior is the Beacon Probe from Annex Team, which is used for super high precision and high speed leveling. On the A1 Mini, this is being used for a completely different application. Bamboo Lab is using the sensor to measure extrusion pressure, which allows them to actively compensate both flow and pressure advance. This completely automates the process, getting rid of the need to manually tune. I did ask about manually tuning for someone that might want to under or over extrude for whatever application and was told that it's not supported at this time. I'm hoping this is something we do see in a future update, at least as an option. On the far left of the x-axis, we have a similar setup to the filament purging system found on the back of existing bamboo printers. This is used before each print to purge existing filament, calibrate flow, and between each filament swap when using the AMS light. There is a spring and lever mechanism used to eject the filament off to the side. You'll want some sort of a bucket or catch for all of the filament that's going to be shooting off the side of the printer. I've noticed that the purging pieces seem smaller on the A1 Mini. Not that it's using less filament when purging, but instead of one large purge, it does a few smaller. I imagine this is because the mechanism itself is much smaller than the chute on the other bamboo printers, and it prevents any accidental spilling over. On the right of the x-axis, there is a small light and camera for monitoring prints. The little cover on the light doubles up as a diffuser, or it can be used to block the camera if you don't want the camera to have any view. There's also an arm for engaging the filament cutter, and a reverse Bowden fitting for running in single spool mode if you don't have the AMS light connected. On the back of the Z-Tower, there is a filament spool holder underneath that Bowden fitting. For printing, options are over Bamboo Cloud, in local LAN mode, or using the micro SD card slot to transfer files. With one of the biggest complaints I've seen on the P1P and P1S being the screen, many will be happy to know that the A1 Mini is using an IPS touchscreen. The screen is bright and has a decent viewing angle. My biggest complaint is the bit of lag from when you touch something to it actually showing up. This is similar on the X1 Carbon, but it may be a hair longer and something I hope can be further optimized. I'll dive more into the AMS Lite later in the video. The printer came packaged very nicely, and along with the A1 Mini and AMS Lite, it includes an accessory box, bamboo filament swatches, and a 3D printed project in a box. The accessory box has a couple of screws that you'll need to attach the spool holder and nozzle wipe, along with a few spares and maintenance oils. I am a big fan of the filament swatches. It's often difficult to tell a filament color from a product page, and sometimes the colors look slightly different when printed. With Bamboo's filament line expanding heavily over the past year, being able to quickly see the color, material type, and its ID is very convenient. Each printer comes with one of four possible print objects. I was sent the wireless mouse version and the LED lamp kit. Setting up the printer consists of removing four screws from a brace that's used to keep the arm from moving during shipping. Then removing a zip tie and foam from the tool head, attaching the filament ejector to the x-axis and the spool holder bracket to the back of the printer. On the AMS light, there are four screws used to attach the legs to the unit, then four rotary spool holders that get attached to the main body, and lastly, four Bowden tubes that need to be attached from the unit to the AMS tool head adapter. There's an included tube organizer that helps tighten everything up a bit, and a single cable that needs to be connected from the printer to the AMS before it can all be powered on. I would say going at a relatively conservative speed, and even recording, the entire process was roughly 30 minutes. For somebody that's familiar with the hardware or knows what they're doing, it can easily be done in about half that time. Powering on the printer, it guides you step by step through the first time setup. This has you select the language, connect to the network if you want to print wirelessly, and pair it to your Bamboo account unless you're going to be using LAN-only mode. Next, it performs the first-time calibrations, which consist of vibration compensation, or input shaping, and motor noise cancellation, which is something that's brand new to the A1 Mini. This is both the X and Y moving back and forth at different speeds. It starts at 50 millimeters a second and works itself up in increments all the way up to 300 millimeters per second. During this time, the printer is analyzing each motor and a noise cancellation algorithm is applied. This doesn't completely get rid of the motor's noise, especially at higher speeds, but it certainly seems like it helps to muffle out those sounds quite a bit. Once these two calibration tests are complete, you are ready to print. The printer only comes with a small filament sample, so I grabbed a spool of voxel PLA and fed it into the feeder on the AMS. There are a handful of pre-sliced files included on the micro SD card, so I went with the classic Benchy. At the beginning of each print, the A1 Mini does an input shaping check. 
It's much shorter than the initial calibration one, and I believe it's primarily checking that the current values are appropriate given the printer's placement or making some slight adjustments. This is followed by a nozzle scrub, cooling of nozzle on the metal bar behind the bed, and a 6x6 mesh. Each point is tapped by the nozzle three times, and being a 36 point mesh, it is a very quick one. Once complete, filament is purged into the ejector, which is where the flow rate and pressure advance is calculated and the print starts. The first thing I noticed was that this printer boogies. I should have expected this given that they told me it can top out at 500 millimeters a second and 10K acceleration, but I was still pretty surprised. One thing I did want to point out for anybody wondering, at these higher speeds, the A1 Mini is fairly noisy. It may be quieter than other high speed printers, but when this thing is moving at its top speeds, the motion system generates a bit of noise and the 50-15 blower fan at 100% definitely creates some noise. The fan is most noticeable when it's doing steep overhangs or bridging, so if you wanted to lower the noise of everything, you would want to slow down your prints a bit so you can also lower the fan speed. The first Benchy completed in 17 minutes, and I was really happy with the end results. There was no stringing, super minimal ringing, and it was a very clean Benchy. I followed this up by loading additional spools into the AMS light and running the multicolor Benchy file. This ended up only being a three swap version, but it did let me see the color swapping in action. I also printed out the filament scraper file since the printer included both the blade and screws needed for this. Next up, I really wanted to check out the included printable projects. Bamboo Lab has been working on a model repository called MakerWorld that has one-click printing for a lot of their printers and downloadable 3MF files. These projects are a really neat way to promote the platform and get those new to 3D printing quickly building things. I started with the LED lamp kit, which has you scan the QR code with the Bamboo app to pull up the project. From here, you can choose between two different designs and hit print to send the job off. Inside the box was the needed electronics consisting of a USB LED with an on-off switch. This was a fairly simple one, but the results are gorgeous, and I can only imagine how excited someone new to 3D printing would be, considering how excited I was to show off this little table light. I followed that up with the wireless mouse project, which is definitely a more advanced one. This consists of four parts, with the outer shell standing vertically using modeled-in tree-style supports. This print took me a few attempts. Everything would go well until the center button of the mouse, where a support would shift, causing the part to fail. I tried this a couple of times with different settings, and each time that center point caused failure. About a week and a half into testing, Bamboo sent out a new hot end to replace the one mine had shipped with. Physically, it was the same, but I was told the manufacturing process had some changes. With this new hot end, I ran the outer shell with two different filaments back to back, and it completed without issue, and some of the stringing that I had previously seen was also gone. The other three parts were much easier, but the base plate did require a mouse here on one section to help with adhesion. The kit includes the PCB, battery terminal, USB dongle, and all parts needed for building this minus a AA battery. The end result is a super cool mouse that I've been using daily for the last couple of weeks. I did confirm with Bamboo Lab that the latest revision of the hot end that I was sent is the one that's going to be shipping with all units from day one. After these initial test prints in PLA, I threw some 95A Shore Hardness TPU into the printer for some gaskets I needed for my VZBot build. It did an excellent job printing these out at high speeds with very minimal stringing. I imagine software TPUs will need to have the settings slightly adjusted, especially with speeds, but 95A performed great with just the stock settings. Although I can't guarantee the accelerations and speeds used on the pre-sliced files, everything that I did was just using the stock speeds in Bamboo Studio. This is 6K acceleration for normal printing, 5K for outer walls, 2K for top surfaces, and 500 for the first layer. I primarily use the 0.2 standard profile, which is between 200 millimeters per second for outer wall and 300 for the inner. I've been very happy with these speeds, but I'll need to do some additional testing to see if I can hit that top speed of 10K acceleration and 500 millimeters per second. I imagine there are going to be some limitations based off of the parts geometry and the specific filament used. As for leveling, the first layers were damn near perfect on every print I threw down. Given that Bamboo swapped from bed to tool head load cells, I wanted to run a mesh and see what a full first layer looked like. So I printed a 0.2 high, single layered, 180 by 180 millimeter square to max out the bed. There was one section on the front left that was slightly thinner, but overall it was a very solid full first layer. If you're wanting to play around with something like Hueforge, large flat prints will not be an issue. I took this opportunity to finally purchase a license and printed my generated image of Bigfoot walking through a meadow smiling <laughs> that I love way more than I probably should. 
Moving on to the AMS light, I'm primarily going to focus on what sets it apart from the initial AMS or from the non-AMS light because a lot of the other things that I covered in my previous video are going to be similar in how they function. Unlike the existing AMS that is a fairly compact unit in a box that sits on the printer, the AMS light is primarily external. I was told that the primary purpose for this was to make it easier to service when needed. Having feeder gears and Bowden fittings outside means there's no need to disassemble the entire unit if some filament happens to break off in a tube somewhere. Much like the existing, it holds four spools so you can print with up to four colors or different filaments. I wouldn't be surprised if they end up expanding on this, allowing you to daisy chain units together using some kind of hub like with the original AMS, but I have no information on that so far. I was told that the regular AMS will not work with the A1 Mini, and also that, at least for now, the AMS Lite is only going to work with this printer. One perk of the AMS Lite is that it's more friendly towards cardboard spools. Since the existing AMS rotates the spools from the bottom on rollers, it creates a fair bit of friction, which can leave cardboard dust and cause potential issues. With this new setup, the center of the spool mounts onto the feeders and the entire spool is rotated so there is none of that friction. The only potential issue is that if you've got a cardboard spool that's kind of flimsy, taking it on or off that center post can potentially deform it, but most all of the cardboard spools that I've used are fairly rigid and I really don't see that being a problem. I need to do much more testing with this new AMS light, but from the few multicolor prints I've thrown at it, print quality has been excellent and equal to that of the current AMS. The only thing I've noticed is that I feel like the spools on this unit load and unload slower than on the original AMS, which may be because Bamboo doesn't want them flying off since they are external versus being inside of this sort of nice closed shell. However, when the AMS light is unloading and loading during filament swaps, it doesn't have to go back nearly as far as the original AMS unit, so I'm not actually convinced that it's any slower than the original AMS unit, just something that I noticed. Overall, the experience with the A1 Mini and AMS Lite has been excellent, and I'm pretty blown away that the combo is going for $459. Much like their current lineup, this is a very well thought out system. My only real complaint is its footprint. Unlike the current lineup that's sort of compact and stacked on top of each other, if you've got the AMS Lite and you've got the printer and some sort of a bucket system to catch the filament flying off of it, you're looking at roughly 700 millimeters or give or take 27 inches, which is a fairly large footprint. Of course, if you just go with the printer, it is a much smaller footprint, and I don't doubt that somebody is going to create some kind of top mounting rack system for this, but it's at least something that you're going to need to consider. I did get confirmation from Bamboo Lab that there is going to be various nozzle sizes available. I specifically asked about 0.2, 0.6, and 0.8, and that there's going to be a upgrade path if you want to swap out the extruder for hardened steel and the nozzle hot end system for hardened steel, so that way you can print with abrasives, similar to what you can do on both the P1P and the P1S. I also asked about enclosing the printer and Bamboo said that it can be done, but it's not necessarily something they recommend, which does make a lot of sense because if you are enclosing this, you're going to be enclosing all of the electronics along with it. Generally, I'm not a big fan of cantilever style printers, but thanks to the Z Tower and the choice to go with these beefy linear rails, this is a very rigid one. The user experience has been positive and I'm once again blown away by the amount of tech they've been able to package into this thing. Would I choose this over my X1 Carbon or my P1S? Probably not, but I also print a lot of ABS and ASA, and I do like the enclosed form factor on these Core XY 3D printers. However, for many people, this is going to be a fantastic option and may even be the better choice. If you're someone that doesn't want to tinker or mod a printer that's looking for high-speed, hands-off quality prints, the A1 Mini looks to check those boxes. Coupled in with the AMS system, this is going to be very hard to compete with, especially at this price point. I plan on doing lots more testing over the coming months to see how this printer and this system holds up, but the initial tests are looking very promising. And that has been the A1 Mini and the AMS Lite. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of your questions. I'm sure there are lots of other things I didn't cover, but I certainly did my best to compact as much information as I could. If you do have any further questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. As always, if I don't know the answer to your question, I have no problem reaching out directly to the manufacturer to try to get those answers for you. If you want to check out the A1 Mini or the AMS Lite or Voxel PLA, I will have links available in the the description below. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. 
Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Diana from Modbot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.